Hey friends, this is Kim from Stones Hill Homestead and today we are going to do just a small canning job and I have some pumpkins left over in the storage area and so I'm going to start first by cutting my pumpkin in half. And I'm going to be cleaning out the seeds. Oops, sorry about that. Clean this all out, get all the strings and the seeds out. Now the pumpkin seeds I will roast as well. We try to use up everything that we can. And these are very tasty. We put some spicy seasoning on them and, and roast them in the oven, bake them, and we just really enjoy them as a snack. Boy, that just made a mess. So when I get these all cleaned out, I will come back with you and show you the next step. So now that the seeds are cut out, it's kind of still stringy in the inside, but I'll clean that up a little bit. And now I'm going to cut these halves in pieces so that I can cube them and get them prepared for the jars. Now these pumpkins definitely needed to be used up. I had a one bad spot. I'll need to cut out of one of them. But I'm getting ready to this and when they're all done cubed up I will bring you back and show you the next step. I just want you to see the mess that a pumpkin can make. This is the most labor intensive part of canning pumpkin is seeding it, peeling it. Other people might use um, roasting prior to. I don't do that. I just clean it, peel it, chunk it, ready to go. So when I'm back with my next piece, I'm going to get this mess cleaned up. We will start the cubing and we'll go through the next part. I use Cutco knives. You can use any knife you want. This is what I prefer. They're my lifetime guarantee knife. They come to my house, they sharpen them. This is not a commercial. They do not sponsor me in any way, shape, form, or fashion. I just want to be transparent and share what I used in cleaning them. Okay, so here we go. We're going to cut all of these in one inch cubes. And I just um, take my knife here and I do scrape out any extra strings that I have. I don't want them going in and I just cut it in one inch cubes. I think they say it's like one and a half pounds of pumpkin per quart jar is what you end up with. And I do not think I will have enough to fill a canner. And I'm filling pint jars today. 
Um, so I will probably put something else in the canner with these so that I have a full canner. Again, I'm just scraping out the leftover that is in here. Get those strings out of there so it'll be nice clean pumpkin when it goes in. Cutting out any bad spots that I may have along the way. I noticed there's a little bit of peeling that I missed, so I'm gonna peel that off here real quick on the edges here. So it's a nice clean piece and I will cube this up. I will be back after I'm done cubing. I'm switching up my knife. That other one was too big for the job. Use the tool for the job. You don't want to slip and cut yourself. So I always a little bit better knife here. See, I got a cup. I got a bad spot here. These pumpkins, it was time to get them used. But other than that, there was only one bad spot on this whole pumpkin. And I'm just taking out that piece. The rest of the pumpkin is perfectly fine. I'll see you back in a few. I've got all the pumpkin now cubed up. I got my jars. They're clean and washed. And I'm getting some blanching water ready for the pumpkin. The pumpkin needs to be blanched for two minutes prior to putting that in the jars. Then I'll take this pumpkin, put it in the jars, put the lids on, and then we are gonna be canning in my All-American canner and look forward to seeing you here in just a little bit. Okay, as you can see, my water is coming up to temperature. I'm gonna go ahead and dump my pumpkin in here, and I'm gonna do it in batches. So I have room to work in the pot. And two minutes is what we're looking at. This blanched and as I dip it out then I will put it in the canning jars a lot of times in northern Indiana we're cold we have snow ice there's nothing growing in the garden so this is a great time to use up those things in the pantry that are gonna go bad if we don't take care of them so Pumpkin is one of them, some squash, potatoes, onions, those things that we harvested late fall, they gotta be used up. And we've put all that time and effort into growing them. We don't wanna, wanna waste them or have them go bad. So that's why we're, I'm doing this. Pumpkin is something we use. I'm very careful not to plant or grow things that we don't eat or use because that would be wasteful too. Um, there are some things that I have tried in the past that we ended up not liking, and so I, will, I never planted or grew them again. However, there are some people in my family that would love to have it. So I have the garden space, so I'm happy to grow for friends and family, and I just give it to them. It just makes it really, really convenient. So here we've been in here now two minutes. And I'm going to start filling up my jars. I believe I'm definitely going to have more than enough to fill all my pint jars. I don't think I'd have needed the funnel. get enough that I'll have two batches of pumpkin. Now some people may say, hey, why didn't you like pumpkin pie filling? Well, you know, when you buy pumpkin in the store, 
why didn't you, you know, mash it up and you could get more out? Well, that is not safe canning. Um, I have never done that. It doesn't recommend that you do that. So you don't want to risk it. And the reason is, is because when you're putting pumpkin in jars, if it's already been pureed and it is thick, like what you buy in the store, you risk not getting the air bubbles out and then you have botulism that could take place. You could have bad food. So safe is always better. Um, you just don't want to want to do that. So what I will do here is I'm going to finish blanching the other batch and I'll come back with you in a few moments. Okay, the next step here is we're going to take boiling water and we're going to fill the jars. And remember, we are looking at an inch, a generous one inch headspace um, from the ball book, the ball canning. That's what it says, and that's what I do. Um, now, I on a previous video, I was doing um, fresh chicken, and someone mentioned that the new standards are an inch and a half. You know, um, I just have always done an inch for my meat, so I, I just have never changed. But you go and do what you think is safe. You do what you need to do. Um, I just have always done it this way. So again, I'm going to fill these with a, a generous one inch head space using the ball canning. And then I'm going to be putting lids on and can it. I got a debubble as well. There we go. People use a chopstick. I use a orange peeler. I stick it down in there on four ways in the middle. I just make sure that all the bubbles are out and then add water because those once those air bubbles come out, see how the water really goes down. So we got to make sure those air bubbles out. Some of them have a little bit too much, so I'm going to remove a couple chunks here and there. few too many in there. I don't want too much. Ah, lost one. And you don't want to overpack. You overpack, you risk buckles in your lids. Um, it's not worth it. Just make sure you've got your generous one inch headspace. It's just safer that way. When you have too much, go. Remember, these are going to be pressure canned. They're, these are low acid or al more alkaline, so you have to pressure can these. Now, in saying that, I want to clarify that some countries don't have the access to pressure canners. So remember, some people are going to say you can, you can water bath these. I just don't. I am able to pressure can them here in the United States. We have access to pressure canners. Many people do not in other countries. So be kind about that because they're providing for their families and have done so for hundreds of years. 
Just follow what you feel in your gut. I will be back with you in the next canning process of the All-American Canner. So I've got the canner started. I'm going to get the water temperature. I've put two inches of water in the bottom of my All-American Canner. I'm going to get that up to the temperature that matches the pumpkin and the boiling water in that jar. I want those to be hot. I don't want thermoshock to happen. So now I'm going to wipe the rims off. I'm going to use some vinegar here, white vinegar. I always do this. You want to clean off those rims, get anything off that you may have spilled on it to create a great seal. You don't want to ruin your chances of sealing because you didn't clean your rims of your jars. So don't miss this step ever. Then I take the extra vinegar that you have here and I'm gonna pour that in my canner. And the reason I do that is because your canner, the water from your sink has mineral deposits, deposits in them. And when they have deposits in them, it causes a white film on your jars. And if you can avoid that, that will save you so much time in the end. Now, I always heat my lids. They say you don't have to. I always do. You do what's best for you. I, I guess I, I just have always done it this way. They are washed, they're cleaned. Now they're nice and warm. Now these are ball canning lids that I'm using right now. There are other brands of lids that I've used. Four jars I've used, Superb I've used, but what I've learned with Superb jars is that you have to actually do a little bit tighter than finger tight. You do not want to over tighten your lids going down. It's just finger tight is all you want. Superb lid, lids, they have to be seated correctly. And you have to actually do another little twist on them. Otherwise, they don't seal and they pop off in the canner. But by far, those are the highest quality of lids that I have ever used. They are thicker metal. They have a great seal. I've never had any failures other than inside the canner because I did not do a little bit of an extra turn on them. So I'm putting these in the canner now. I'll show you that when I get them all in there. I believe I'll be able to get nine pints in here. Looks like I'm only going to be able to get eight pints in here. There we go. So here we go. They are in the canner. The next piece of canning with an all American canner is you have to treat the beveled edge with olive oil. And the reason you do this is because it doesn't have a rubber seal like many of the other canners do. I just put it on with my finger here and this is 
so that one, the lid doesn't stick, and this is what's gonna create your seal on your canner. I also take some of my paper towel and I'm gonna rub it right along this edge. I hope you can see that. And I do that for the same reason. You do not want a canning a canner lid to see or to get stuck. So now I set this down here like this and I turn it. And by doing that, you've set your lid. Well, it's on backwards. Let's this this arrow with this divot here. And now these this arrow on the lid and this divot match. The other thing you then you need to do once you get that on is you need to make sure that this piece here is level all the way around. You don't want one side lower than the other. And it's, it's more of a, it's just more of an eye measurement. You just want to make sure it's level. Then you're going to take these wing nuts. Now see how that wing nut doesn't go up over there? They just unscrew and it sits up over it. You're going to do wing nuts. You're going to tighten the wing nuts together across from one another. So then we're going to do the next one and we're going to tighten those together. So don't go pounding on your, on your canner because those wing nuts don't fit on there. So like this, I'm just going to show you again. See how that doesn't go on there? Just unscrew it a little bit. It'll sit up there and there you go. Now, once these are tight, I go back around and make sure all of them are tight again. Touching each one to make sure. I'm looking at it. It looks like it's pretty level all the way around. I'm gonna move the camera here a little bit. There you go. There is the canner ready to go. This pressure will need to come up, but prior to that pressure coming up, this is this vent. I have checked, I can see through, I can see through that vent, I can see light in it. Now, once this steam car stop starts to come out of that, I will let that vent for 10 minutes and then I will process my pint jars for 55 minutes for pumpkin chunks. Remember, we can't um, pressure can puree. The reason is you can't get all the air bubbles out. So I will see you when the vent starts venting and we've waited 10 minutes. It's hard to see, but the steam is coming out right here. And we will let that vent for 10 minutes. The timer is on. Okay, it has vented. See the spray? It has vented for 10 minutes. And you can see on the, on the gauge here, the pressure is even starting to climb, even though we haven't put on the pressure. I'm gonna drop my weight on here. As you can see, it is 10 pounds right there. And I'm gonna set that right there on there. And now the pressure is going to start to build. When it gets to 10 pounds of pressure, I am going to process, I'm going to start the timer. Once it reaches 10 pounds of pressure for 55 minutes for pints. Follow your canning manual. Do not listen to me because I'm using an American, all American canner. Every canner is different. So make sure that you that you add or do the do the recommendations for your canner and mine is 10 pounds 
of pressure for my elevation and 55 minutes. And so we will get back when this is all the way canning after the canning time is done. And as you can see, it's already up to five pounds of pressure. It's not wasting any time to get to that because we have followed the correct venting time and it's bringing it up. Some people also ask, why don't I just buy pumpkin in the store? Well, this was free pumpkin to me. It came out of my garden. It was a volunteer pumpkin for pies that came up and I ended up with two very beautiful pumpkins. They've been in storage. So that is free pumpkin to me. And by the time I am done, I will have 15 pints of pumpkin out of those two very small pumpkins. I feel that that is a win, that that is a win and I can help make pies, banana bread with pumpkin, pumpkin bread, pumpkin pies, pumpkin cookies. There's just many things you can use pumpkin for. Don't be intimidated by the pressure canner. Start small, start with the water bath canning. My first canning process was tomato juice and salsa. Those were the first two things I ever did. Then I started on bigger things, grape juice, peaches, pears. I did a lot of pear sauce, a lot of applesauce, really enjoyed that. Peaches was overwhelming to me, um, so I didn't do it for many years. Actually, this past year was the first year I've done peaches in probably 20 years just because it was very overwhelming. I bit off more than I could chew early on, and now I've developed that skill set of canning and what needs to take place to do those bigger, harder jobs. So, Start small. Don't just jump into the hardest project you can. Start small, and I would think of like tomato products, fruit products. Those are the probably the easiest, especially with applesauce, tomato juice, salsa, even pie filling for apple pie filling. That was one of the easier ones that I've done. I'm gonna move this over just for a little bit here for you so you can see that pressure is coming up to 10 pounds. There you go. And the one thing I'm gonna listen for is this weight to jiggle. And it's starting to bubble out. I don't want a continuous jiggle of, of venting. I want about one to four times an hour with this but that'll jiggle and make this sound like you're hearing right now. And that means my pressure is where it needs to be. There you go, look at that bobble. I'm gonna turn it down to medium heat so that that bobble stops. I don't want it any higher in pressure. So it's releasing pressure and that is what I'm doing. I'm lowering pressure so that that only bobbles or wiggles, see that how that weight is wiggling? One to four times an hour. I'm at the pressure. I'm just gonna wait now 55 minutes. Okay, here we are. We are done. I have turned off the heat on the canner. It is going to have to come down to pressure. I'm just going to let it come down to pressure naturally. So what you will see is this dial right here, it will be at zero. Once it hits zero, I wait an additional five minutes to make sure it's all escaped. I just let it cool and then I can take the weight off and unload the canner and we can start the next process. Okay, so our canning session is done. We have pressure canned the pumpkin for 55 minutes at 10 pounds of pressure. Again, follow your canner. It could be 11 pounds of pressure with a gauge, and I believe it's weighted with a weight, it's 10 pounds. Just follow your pressure canner instructions. So now I am going to open the canner. I use an oven mitt 
got my oven mitt on and I'm gonna lift that off and see how there was no steam, there was no pressure that was released, which means I let the canner come down to temperature naturally the way it is supposed to. And now I can open up the canner. You have to be very careful again. It's still a lot of steam in there and you're gonna open it the same way you closed it. You are gonna open it using the wing nuts across from each other. Open them, opening them at the same time. Letting them fall. So now we're gonna turn the lid. We're gonna open it up. We're gonna lift it away from us. And set this in a safe spot. It is heavy. And I'm just gonna let those cool down a little bit more before I remove them. I always wanna make sure that They've came down to pressure just a little bit more. I do not want thermoshock to happen, which is when the bottom busts out of the jar, and that happens when it cools down too fast. So we just wanna make sure that we have done that. Just be very, very cautious, very safe. Use safe practices. We don't want burns because it can happen so quickly when you are canning. Take a jar, jar lifter and we are gonna remove the cans. And look at that, still boiling. Look at that, how it is. Everything is still extremely hot. These will set for 24 hours. As soon as they cool down and all have sealed, I will remove the rings and then they will go on to my pantry shelves after they have sat 24 hours. The reason you remove the rings on canning jars after pressure canning or water bath canning is because the ring can create a false seal and things might go bad and not know it because there was a false seal. So always, always remove those rings to store on your pantry shelves. There we go. One more jar and then I've got hot jars over here that I need to put in the canner again. But I am going to pour some water in here to cool this temperature down just a little bit. I need my two inches of water in there. And then I will process the next batch. The other thing I am doing is I'm gonna swing you around here is cleaning them pumpkin seeds. So the next video, I will be making roasted pumpkin seeds. Look forward to seeing you then. Again, thanks for watching. Appreciate all the new subscribers. I have gotten, I am just so blessed. Thank you so much for taking the time watching me. Um, I'm not a professional by any means. I don't edit videos well, but I sure appreciate you all watching and want you to just hang in there and, and know that canning is a new skill set that we need for self-reliance. Check out all the links below. Everything I've talked about or people or recipes that I've used are linked in the bottom. I do follow Ashley with Practical Self-Reliance. This is her canning recipe for pumpkin or canning practice. Go ahead and check out her channel as well. Again, this is also in regards to the Pantry Challenge, Three Rivers Pantry Challenge with Jessica, who hosts us every year for this, and it's making every bit count. And she also does an every bits count 
um, journey as well in August, I believe. So go to her channel, check her out and follow her as well. She has some great, great information. And with a large family where I'm just, me and my husband, my, my kids and my grandkids, small family. And it's just nice to, to get other points of view. So go check out her channel as well. We look forward to seeing you next time and have a great, great week. Be blessed.